I'd like you to think of a great leader. What is it that they do? What attributes do they have? How do they make you feel? And how would you describe them to somebody else? Now, you may be familiar with the TV game show, Pointless, where 100 people are asked a question, and the aim of the contestant is to identify the least popular correct answer. If I asked 100 people what the qualities of a great leader are, I'm reasonably confident that vulnerability would be a pointless answer. So why is that? Is it because somehow we regard vulnerability to be a sign of weakness? What I've learned over the years is not only is vulnerability something that all leaders experience, but actually it's a core foundation of all effective leadership. There's a leadership myth that is perpetuated. That is, that all great leaders have it all worked out. That they always know what they're doing. That they're consistently decisive, confident, strong and self-assured. And the problem with this is that it gives us a measuring stick that we all then compare our leadership with. Warren Buffett talks about leaders having an inner scorecard and an outer scorecard. And that too many of us spend most of our life focused on our outer scorecard, making unhelpful and unrealistic comparisons with other people and other leaders. When in reality, what we should be doing is focus much more on our inner scorecard. How can we be the best version of ourselves? And how can we be at our best for more of the time? I was a head teacher in a West London secondary school for six years. And I was a pretty good one, I think, if you take the usual metrics of exam outcomes, Ofsted judgments, feedback from parents, students and staff. However, I can tell you this, that I spent almost all of my time feeling like some sort of Scooby-Doo villain, waiting to walk round the corner and be unmasked at any moment, not just by those meddling kids, but by the staff and my peers. In fact, my overriding emotion as I drove to work most mornings was, is this the day I'm going to get found out? Now, I'm privileged now to spend most of my time mentoring, coaching and developing head teachers, senior leaders and leaders from outside the world of education. And I can tell you this, that almost to a person, regardless of sex, age, race, role or even experience, they're all racked by imposter syndrome. They're all racked by self-doubt and the fear of being found out. The sort of negative emotions that can have a real impact on your physical and mental health, as well as your relationships with others. Now, partly, this is because leadership is hard, particularly if you're sitting in the top seat. There are days I might not have even crossed the threshold into my office if I'd have really thought about all the things I was really accountable for and truly responsible for. But what I came to realise is not only do most leaders feel this way, and they do a great job anyway, but very few of us have got the courage to really be vulnerable and give ourselves permission to be vulnerable. If we continue to perpetuate this myth of the hero leader, if we fail to have an honest dialogue about the holistic nature of leadership and have failed to recognise the fallibility of human beings as leaders, I think there's some real risks. Firstly, that we increase the level of fear and isolation amongst those struggling under the weight of leadership. And we all feel like this from time to time. Human beings have only got a finite uh, capacity to deal with pressure. And given the timing, volume or complexity of that pressure, it will either flow over us or threaten to consume us. And leadership like sport is a team, leadership like life is a team sport. We need to support other leaders better and not make it a competition and we need to invite their support in. Secondly, just at a time when we need more people to take up the leadership challenge, I fear that the way we're demonstrating leadership and hero leaders and the perfection of leadership, we're putting people off taking up those roles. And the problem is, is this is problem gets bigger with social media. Because leaders have become experts of putting a, a filtered, high-definition view of leadership. 
a view of leadership that suggests that everything is amazing all of the time. That these people seemingly glide through leadership without a care in the world, with their superhero cape flowing behind them. It's unhelpful, it's unrealistic, and it's utter nonsense. Leadership is hard. Making the big decisions is hard. Holding the accountability is hard. Leading people, all with their own egos and selfish wants and needs, is hard. But it's an amazing job. And here's a secret that the hero leaders don't want you to know about. Firstly, we're all making it up as we go along. And secondly, it is eminently doable for mere mortals like you and me. I wrote a blog in 2018 called Permission to be Vulnerable and it received a really nice response, a really positive response and it made me realise not only was I not the only person feeling this way but actually high performance leaders regularly demonstrate their vulnerability. Let's explore two in very different contexts. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, one of the world's biggest brands. And secondly, Danny Cotton, the first female commissioner of the London Fire Brigade in its 150-year history. When Satya Nadella took over from Steve Ballmer as CEO, he set about fundamentally changing the culture of Microsoft. No longer was it important to prove you were the most important person in the room, the smartest person in the room. You didn't need to tread over other people to prove your leadership strength. In fact, Nadella gave his leaders permission to take more risks, to be more vulnerable, to not be afraid of failure, to ask naive questions, and to collaborate more, not just with other leaders, but with competitors as well. On the 14th of June, 2017, Danny Cotton was called out in the middle of the night to take charge of the London Fire Brigade's response to the Grenfell Tower fire. 72 people tragically lost their lives that night. 600 firefighters attended the incident, all of them exposed to severe personal trauma. Now, the leadership decisions that were taken that night will be the subject of the, leadership, the ongoing public inquiry. But Danny Cotton's leadership style went through the organisation like a stick of rock over those coming days and weeks after the fire. She openly spoke to the media about her personal trauma, her mental health challenges, and the fact that she was seeking the support of a counsellor. She understood what it meant to be a fallible leader. She understood that she needed to give herself permission to be vulnerable and have the courage to do so. And she did all of that while maintaining the confidence of her firefighters, a workforce made up of predominantly men used to fulfilling a stereotype of strength and resilience. Now, there are people that might say that these leadership styles are somehow soft or fluffy or potentially even a sign of weakness. Satya Nadella has been voted the world's best CEO to work for and has tripled the stock value of Microsoft in the first four years of being in charge. Through giving herself permission to be vulnerable and by giving other people permission to be vulnerable, Danny Cotton has marked a seismic shift in the organisational culture of the London Fire Brigade. She gave people the licence not to be okay. She gave people the understanding that resilience is sometimes knowing when to ask for help. High performance leaders demonstrate their vulnerability in other ways too. They welcome check and challenge. Far from seeing it as a threat to their leadership, actually they welcome it because they understand it makes the organisation a better place. So they flatten the hierarchy to make sure the distance between the top and the bottom is at its smallest. A good idea is a good idea no matter who or where it comes from. Vulnerable leaders bring themselves to work. They're human first and leaders second. So they don't wear their leadership like some sort of mask. They understand that by doing this, it creates a culture of safety, trust and belonging that brings everybody on the organisation with them. You won't find vulnerable leaders telling people how much they do know. In fact, you'll find them more often telling everybody how much they don't know. They're fully aware of their failings. They're fully aware of the need to bring in people that may be better than they are and to build diverse teams to make the organisation better. 
And vulnerable leaders don't feel the need to climb over other people to prove their leadership strength. In a world that may be increasingly asks us to be more isolationist, protectionist, to pull up the drawbridge and to focus on me rather than we, vulnerable leaders push back against that because they know that through collaboration, through sharing knowledge around the system, not only does the system benefit, but their organisation benefits and they benefit as leaders. So how can we encourage more people to be vulnerable in leadership? Let me just leave you with three things by way of a provocation. Firstly, we need to let the mask drop. We need to stop presenting a high-definition view of leadership filtered out to the world. We need to be more authentic and honest about the pressures we feel, the vulnerability we feel. And we need to invite support in. We need to demonstrate more situational humility. In a complex world, it is neither reasonable nor possible for any one leader to have all the answers to a problem. So what we need to do is create a, a, a climate and a culture where people can bring their ideas to the table, that people can feel safe doing that in a low-threat environment, and they know their ideas are going to be included. And finally, we need to make sure that leaders take more risks. Brené Brown talks about choosing courage over comfort. Taking more risks means the likelihood of failure increases and hero leaders are not happy with that place. But vulnerable leaders are because they know that that's where the creativity happens. That's where the innovation happens. That's where the answer to the world's stubborn problems happen when we take more risks. So let's change the narrative around leadership. Let's look again at leadership. Vulnerability is something that all leaders experience. It's normal and it's okay. But the best leaders are authentic about it, they're honest about it, and they actually use it to their benefit to make them even better leaders. So far from being leadership kryptonite, vulnerability becomes their superpower. Thank you very much.